one cubic centimeter of a typical cumulus cloud contains 50 to 500 water drops, which have a typical radius of 10 microns. For that range, give the lower value and the higher value respectively for the following. Uh, part A. How many cubic centimeters of water are in a cylindrical cumulus cloud of height 3 kilometers and radius 1 kilometer? I'll read part uh, B and C later, but right now let's focus on part A for the time being. Now, this problem isn't extremely challenging or extremely confusing in what it's asking, but it might be a little bit tricky if you're still not quite used to uh, the whole thinking in terms of dimensions and thinking in terms of uh, how you want to find what it is the question's asking you to find and how you want to set up the problem. Uh, with a question like this, where it's asking us about the amount of uh, volume of water that will be taken up in another volume that it tells us the dimensions for, uh, then we want to establish a few things first, like what will actually be the volume of such a cylinder in, cylinder in the first place, and what will be the volume of a of a cubic or of a water drop if this is what its radius is. So, for example, so for the volume of a cylinder. Since uh, you should know that the volume of a cylinder is equal to uh, pi times the radius of the cross-sectional area of the, of the uh, cylinder squared times the height, then we can figure out from here that the volume of this cylinder that we're given here is going to be pi times the radius, one kilometer, but I'm going to convert into meters since, again, it's, usually, it's also pretty helpful to convert into SI units when necessary. So 1,000 meters uh, squared times the height, which is 3 kilometers or 3,000 meters. And so the volume here, plugging this into your calculator, is going to be about 9.4 times 10 to the 9th power of cubic meters. And we should also, uh, just to get it out of the way, figure out what the volume of, the, of, a, of a single water drop is, if that might become important later. So it gives us the radius of a water drop, so that pretty much tells us that we can idealize all the drops as perfect spheres. That's our estimation anyway. So let's say the volume of a sphere, or V sub S, is going to be equal to, and the volume of a sphere is equal to four-thirds times pi times the radius of the sphere cubed. So r cubed. And with the information we're given, that's 4 over 3 pi times pi times the radius, which is 10 microns, or 10 times 10 to the negative 6th meters here. And of course, oh, and don't forget to cube it. That's important as well. And of course, the answer we get for this is about 4 times 2 times 10 to the negative 15th of cubic meters. Let's fix that little x there. Once again, I apologize in advance for the mouse handwriting. It can be a little bit messy at times, but as long as you're listening carefully to what I'm saying, you should understand what it is I'm trying to write here. Now anyways, now let's try and figure out how many drops of water would fit into this cylinder. So something that the question gives us is that there are about 50 to 500 water drops in a single cubic centimeter. But let's see if we can bring this up to the to an estimate of how many water drops we would find total in the entire cylinder. So it's interesting that the question gives us a range because this is something more similar to what you would actually find in a real physics lab or in a real science lab in general where you'd usually be, you'd have to deal with uncertainty in the estimations you're given. Uh, it can be a little bit tedious, but it always makes the experiments more, uh, it makes them potentially more accurate in the measurements that, uh, in the results calculated. But either way, if we want to find out how many water drops will be in the cylinder, then let's take the, air, or the volume of the cylinder and multiply it by uh, the corresponding measurement for the amount of water drops in a cubic meter. So uh, let's take that measurement then. So for the lower bound, for instance, it's going to be the volume of the cylinder, so 9.4 times 10 to the, to the ninth power. 
of meters cubed uh, times the number of drops in a cubic centimeter. Now we're dealing with cubic meters here on uh, in terms of the volume of the cylinder. So you should be sure to convert the number of water drops in a cubic centimeter to the number of water drops in a cubic meter as well. And that's another thing that uh, previous questions have demonstrated. It's an important thing to be able to do in problems like this. So for 50, for instance, we know that if it's 50 water drops per cubic centimeter, then we have to convert that to cubic meters. So of course, there are 100 centimeters in a meter. I'll fix that. And cube the whole thing. And this gets us an answer of about um, 4.7 times 10 to the 17th power of drops. So for 50 drops in a cubic centimeter, or I think that'd be about 5 million drops in a cubic meter, that is about 4.7 times 10 to the 17th drops in the entire cylinder. Now let's do that again but for the upper bound we're given. Let's do that again, but for 500 water drops. So that will be 9.4 times 10 to the 9th power of cubic meters, and multiply it by uh, 500 drops per cubic centimeter. That's 500 drops in a cubic centimeter times, again, the same conversion rate for centimeters into meters. And cube it again. And this time we get 4.7 times 10 to the 18th power of drops. So now we have a full bound here. So the number of drops that will be contained within the cylinder uh, it will be between 4.7 times 10 to the 17th and 4.7 times 10 to the 18th. Now, how are we going to find the actual, um, how many cubic meters of water are in a cylindrical cumulus cloud? So, in other words, the volume of the water in that cylinder. So, what we can do here is take the volume of a sphere, so take the volume of an individual one of these drops, and multiply it by the number of drops in the sphere, because that will give us the total area that is taken up by um, the drops in the, in the cylinder. So for the lower bound, for instance, that is the volume of the sphere, or 4.2 times 10 to the negative 15th power of a meters cubed, 3, and multiply it by what we got for the lower bound of the total number of drops in the cube. So 4.7 times 10 to the 17th. And that gives us a final answer, for part A anyway, of about 1.97 times uh, 10 to the third power of cubic meters. And performing this exact same calculation again, except for the upper bound, the answer you get uh, for the for 500 drops, or for 4.7 times 10 to the 18th power, instead of 17th power, is 1.97 times 10 to the 4th power of cubic meters. So rounding this down to only one uh, significant figure, the range we get then is 2 times 10 to the 3rd power, 2, 2 times 10 to the 4th power. Of cubic meters. So that is our range for the volume of the water in the cylinder, rounded down. But now for part A, uh, for part B, the next part of the problem. And part B is how many one liter pop bottles would that water fill? That's a pretty straightforward part of the problem. So one liter is equal to about a thousand centimeters, or a thousand cubic centimeters rather. Or in terms of meters, it is equal to about one thousandth of a cubic meter. So that is what we're going to be working with here, the one thousandth measurement, or one times ten to the negative three cubic centimeters. So once again, we're going to have to do the measurement, we're going to have to do the calculation twice, for the lower number and the upper number. But for either way, for both calculations though, we're going to want to get uh, the cubic meters together. So for the lower bound, for instance, we, we want to find out how many bottles we can fill up. So if one bottle takes up this much space, then how much space do we have 
uh, in for, for the amount of drops and how many bottles can we fill up. So to do that, we can do that pretty simply with division. So we can take the, uh, the area or the volume of the drops, so 1.97 times 10 to the third power, for instance, if we're working with cubic meters, and divide it by the area or the volume, the, uh, the liter volume, sorry, or one times 10 to the negative third of cubic meters. And that gets us um, a, n a number of bottles of two times 10 to the sixth bottles. And performing a similar calculation, once again, except for the upper bound, where we just use our upper, vol upper uh, number of, uh, upper amount of volume, so 1.97 times 10 to the fourth power of cubic meters divided by a thousandth of a meter is going to be uh, just the same thing, except it's going to be 2 times 10 to the seventh power of bottles. So our answer for part B is that it will fill up, depending on the amount of drops in a cubic centimeter, it will fill up between 2 times 10 to the sixth power to 2 times 10 to the seventh power of bottles. Now for the final part, part C. Now let's see what part C is asking. It says, um, water has a density of 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. So how much mass does the water in the cloud have? All right, this is pretty similar to previous problems we've had, where you have to take into account density in conjunction with mass and volume. And we know that uh, density is equal to mass times volume, so therefore, mass must be equal to volume times density. Now, we have the density of the water. It's given to us in the problem. And we have a couple estimates for the area, or the volume, of the water, as we found toward the end of part A. So once again, all we have to do is sub in those values and find what the mass would be. So for the lower bound, for 1.97 times 10 to the third power of the cubic meters, times the density, or 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter, that gives us a mass of 2 times 10 to the 6th power of kilograms. And performing the same uh, calculation again, but using the upper bound, or 1.97 times 10 to the 4th power of cubic meters, times 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter, is going to be 2 times 10 to the 7th power of kilograms. So our final answer for part C, then, is that the amount of mass is going to be between 2 times 10 to the 6th power to 2 times 10 to the 7th power of kilograms. And that is our answer for all three parts.